Alrighty, so today I wanted to show you uh, two runs basically. I did a bird run and a dog's run with uh, Chaos Arthur because I actually had a comment suggesting that I use them because it's like super, super easy. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I seen Sora post a video about the bird using a similar team. Um, I haven't watched it yet, but uh, I'm not 100% sure who his fourth slot was, but this was the team that was suggested to me. I think... If I'm not mistaken, this might be the first time I've ever ran Bird, like, since Miguelda came out without Miguelda. And, uh, typically whenever I, you know, try out new characters and stuff like that, I throw Miguelda in the fourth slot anyway. But, because I'm using LR Escanor here, I have to have a full human team, and Brunhild was the one that was suggested to me. I'm not a huge fan of Brunhild, and I am using full crit chance rolls on one of her attack pieces, so that way she has a better chance to crit. But, this team was just fantastic honestly like you're you already use four cards per turn anyway so arthur's passive is incredibly easy to get maxed out you know whenever you go into turn two um there was only two different phases in this whole run for the bird where i did not one shot the phase itself and that was the last two phases of floor three and it's just because he gets a lot more tanky of course and i think i would have one shot the last phase but he got the 50 percent revive passive which you know it is what it is two out of the three passives that he gets on the, the you know the final phase of floor three have a passive that uh, revives so it was just you know rng on whether or not i was going to get a lucky run with no revive or not plus uh i guess it's not the worst one because you can still get the revive that increases stats and stuff and just completely heals him so you can see i mean just <laughs> the amount of damage that you're doing is pretty insane um, you know, I showed off the card set and everything. I'm still using the bird card set. I did use the dogs card set for the dogs as well, just because I guess I could have maybe swapped over to the the bird card set for the extra single target damage, which could have maybe been good, but the amount of freezes and stuff that you have to deal with from the black dog on the, on the you know, Skull and Hati fight is uh, more annoying than anything, so I just kind of wanted to prevent that if possible. But um, yeah, honestly, I'm not crazy about Brunhild. She is getting a little dated. Her crit chance was maybe not you know, uh, you know, the, the highest, uh, even with some of those roles being crit chance and everything, but, um, she crit, you know, pretty often from, you know, in the early, like, two floors, and then once we get to floor three, I think there was maybe one or two hits where she didn't crit at all, which was unfortunate, but it just kind of is what it is, so... Although, you know, I'm, I'm not really going to complain that much. It was super, super smooth. Once you get, you know, Arthur's passive going and you can slap with the single target card, pretty much that on top of the Escanor cards and the Roxy single target, they're, they're all basically going to crit. So um, you can use the Flood card, you know, as just a, a means of either getting rid of it out of your hand or just, you know, because it's I think it's still going to end up doing damage cap most of the time, depending on the phase that you're on. But, you know, in the, in the later floors... Um, on the higher phases. It will get to the point where some of these cards aren't going to be hitting damage cap, but the extra damage that you get from the single targets and the pop damage is going to help you clear it a lot faster. So, it's pretty quick. It's pretty simple. Uh, I really enjoyed using this, actually. I'm going to probably cut down some of the, uh, the in-between sections and everything, but I think it took me, like, seven minutes, maybe eight minutes or so without, you know, trimming down the, like, the in-between floors and stuff like that just to be able to finish the bird, uh, which, I mean, you know, the bird isn't necessarily super hard nowadays anyways, but the fact that you can beat it that quick and simple, and it was so brain dead. Like, <laughs> I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think Sora's title for bird was was brain dead bird team uh which is a hundred percent true it is it is ridiculous you literally just throw single targets out like crazy if you don't have single targets you just throw out you know whatever your highest attacking aoe's are and then just you know if you think you're going to kill anyway you just get rid of any of your you know aoe's that you don't think are going to do that much like I would obviously prioritize Escanor cards, Arthur single targets, Roxy single targets if possible. So if you get to the point where you're, maybe you don't kill in one one turn, you're like, okay, I'm not going to kill this turn, but in the next turn he's already low health, I might as well just throw away any of my Roxy AoEs. Uh, you can throw away the Arthur AoEs if you want to, but they're still going to do a lot better damage than the other AoEs are. Um, and then other than that, maybe getting rid of the Brunhild detonate cards. Uh, you could save the 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 Brunhild um, Power Strike cards if you really need to for the final phase of Floor 1, but honestly, the team was just doing so much damage anyway, it didn't really feel felt like I needed to save them. I think I did use one uh, earlier, uh, but um, yeah, it's honestly just super fast, super easy, like 
it's so simple. You really don't have to worry about it at all. But uh, yeah, very cool. That's the bird. All right, so moving on to the dogs. The dogs were, I think the dogs are probably the one that I end up having the most trouble with. I did farm out the dogs a lot in the early days of, uh, you know, trying to get the relics and stuff like that. But once they kind of moved on to Nidhogg and kind of just stopped really supporting a lot of the older demonic beasts, which uh, they've, they've been better about that more recently with adding some, you know, holy relics to the older beasts. But, um, you know, I, I, I would say that I have the least experience with like fast clearing Skull and Hati, and uh, this team was like super easy, simple. I didn't have to do any resets or anything. The team, of course, is just still super strong. So because it's the same basic setup that you're using with the bird team, you basically just do the same things here. The only thing to note is that uh, Thonar is actually human, so that's fantastic. You can use her to sort of kind of um, basically, you're just using her for her passive, getting the attack-related stats, on top of the fact that, you know, you attack three times, she gives uh, the uh, the passive, and every time you're attacking with her, you're gaining a, uh, an ultimate move gauge orb for the whole team, which is super, super strong. So you can basically just try to throw out some of her attacks. Her, you know, her attack-related stats are not great, I'll be honest. So if you can try to use her cards maybe last, uh, after she's she's got her passive popped or something like that you might have a better chance of critting but her crits are going to be extremely inconsistent you can see right here this is phase two uh, i do end up popping i think yeah one crit on both of these um hits i think this hit actually does more than one crit but either way uh, i do actually get some crits in there which is really really lucky because the aoe here does enough damage to get the single target plus the pop damage to actually kill this phase in one shot, even using two Thonar cards, which is really surprising to me. Like, her crit chance is going to be on the very lower end. It's going to be a huge gamble if she's actually going to crit and pop the Roxy passive or not. But, you know, if it does, that's great. If it doesn't, you know, you're, you're pretty easily getting ultimate move gauge and stuff anyway. So as long as you have the dog's card set, you shouldn't be getting frozen or anything. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that I had the Arthur uh, ultimate before I went into the final phase there because it doesn't have a damage cap on it. I wanted to try to use that to get as much damage off to both dogs as possible. Uh, and because mine's one six it did not one shot the whole phase which is a bit unfortunate i think if i had maybe either a two or three six i'm not sure on a two six but i know at least i would say a three six would for sure kill um, because you get more all stats and everything and it increases the amount of damage that you're actually dealing so super simple super easy uh going into the other phases you do have a little bit more defense related stats and stuff that you have to deal with but overall nothing too crazy um 
Uh, obviously, if you don't know basic setup for Skull and Hati on Phase 2, you just try to kill it as quickly as possible. But sometimes you, you want to make sure that you're going into the final phase with some ultimates because the Black Dog is still going to put a ton of like debuffs on and stuff. So making sure that you can kill the Black Dog as fast as possible when you go into Phase 3 is sometimes preferred. So if you need to stall once in this phase, which you can see that I did not uh, kill in one turn here, so... We kind of ended up stalling anyway. Arthur's one ultimate move gauge away from being full. You can see that he does actually end up freezing me here in just a moment. The Black Dog's going to uh, freeze me once. I think he attacks and freezes me again. But because Arthur's stance is a gray debuff, or it's not a stance, it's a taunt, um, he still has to you know, attack Arthur, which is great. So it's not even like a huge deal. So that's honestly really nice. The fact that you're pretty much using four skills a turn anyway, unless you're just not gaining ultimate move gauge with them, which is possible because you're gaining so much with uh, the Thonar that you might end up being full ultimate move gauge. But if you can refresh Arthur's passive, you're going to cleanse off two debuffs, which is kind of nice. Um, so that kind of helps him a little bit. Just going into the final phases, making sure that you can just you know do as much damage as possible as early as possible uh, shouldn't be too big of an issue. On phase two, of course, or floor two, you do have to worry about them having the revive if you attack too many times times but you know like i said earlier the damage on these teams is just so ridiculously high that you're going to be hitting damage caps pretty often and if you're not the pop damage from the roxy passive should be helping quite a bit so i didn't quite kill but the pop damage kills the black dog anyway and then i can immediately move over to the white dog and it's not really that big of a deal so I mean, it's basically the same thing for the Floor 3 as well. Floor 3 can be, you know, pretty difficult, I guess. They're definitely tankier and everything. But um, like I said, man, it's uh, it's super cut and dry, super easy, just very straightforward for the most part. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to, you know, comment below or ask me away. I guess I, this was my first time using both of these setups. So, I mean, I'm not, like, super experienced. I probably could have min-maxed a little bit more or, like, done some different plays to make it even faster. But uh, overall, like, just <laughs> super, super super quick for both of these fights so that's pretty much it for me thank you guys so much for watching hopefully you guys enjoyed the video feel free to subscribe if you haven't already and uh yeah i'll see you guys tomorrow